let's go ahead and dive into our first topic. That topic is gonna to be around surge protection. Chad, I know there have been a number of code changes related to surge protection over the last few NEC iterations. Can you walk us through kind of what are those changes, what do they look like, and what is it looking like now in 2023? Yeah, glad to do it. You know, if we think about the expansion of electronics and digital controls in all areas of our lives, in our homes and um, in our businesses, it's also, we also see this in power equipment. So I think we all have experience on some level of a loss, uh, a product loss due to over voltage transient and surge protection. So as we look at the 2023 NEC, we'll see that focus, right? In 215.18, we're talking about feeders and the specific areas that are addressed in this code section are dwellings, um, guest rooms and guest suites of hotels and motels, dormitory units, and areas of nursing homes and limited care facilities where you have exclusive sleeping areas, okay, patient sleeping areas. When we think about these, it's important to note the location. The new code requirement here requires these uh, SBDs to be located in the equipment or, in, or adjacent to the equipment where the overcurrent protection for those branch circuits reside. So it's moving that surge protection closer to those loads that need to be protected, which again, it will provide the most over voltage protection in that spot common configurations. If we think about commercial applications, you end up in a lot, many cases with a small panel in each of these units. And based on the location requirement, that's where that surge protective device would be located. Again, placing that protection as close to the units that the areas that need the protection. From a rating standpoint, um, the surge protection devices need to be either a type one, suitable for use on the line side of a service disconnect, or type two, suitable for use on the load, load side of a service disconnect. In this case, obviously, we would be talking about a load two, uh, type two because we're on the load side of the service. But we also have other ratings to consider in this section. We have the um, rating that the dis nominal discharge current should be 10 kA or greater. So we have specific location requirements and specific ratings that must apply in this case. When we look at the 2020 NEC, we had a similar requirement introduced there for dwelling unit services, but it was limited to the service. In the 2023 NEC, that change over in Article 230 also expanded to include these areas, as well as that line, the location and ratings. So now they both align. And so Doug, we're talking about feeders here. What about outdoor feeders? You're right, Chad. So this was added in 225.42 with regards to outdoor feeders and branch circuits for the same types of areas. After considering these requirements, a common question arises is, do we have to install surge protection at the service equipment and the feeder equipment? These two code sections complement each other pretty well. The requirement for service equipment includes an exception for installations where surge protection is provided mm -hmm. at each next level of the design distribution. Designing for surge protection that is tiered at each level for the power system will provide a better protection for sensitive electronics and the code sets the minimum requirement, but not always the best practice. Yeah, absolutely. I think when we think about those use in the power systems, there's two ratings that we need to keep in mind. One is a short circuit current rating. An SPD does need a short circuit current rating and that's required for all electrical components in the power system, right? You have to have a short circuit current rating that meets or exceeds the available fault current at that point in the system. And that's all about safely clearing a fault. But the nominal discharge current, in this case 10 kA or greater, applies to how many times a given current can pass through the surge device, the surge protective device, and it remain functional. So in this case, an SPD must, must tolerate a 10 kA over voltage wave shape 15 times and still remain functional afterwards. So I think it's a key point that these two, both of these markings are marked on the equipment mm -hmm. and it can be confusing for users sometimes to make sure that they recognize both are important. And Judy, you know, when we think about um, the implementation of SBD, sometimes we forget about renovation projects or retrofits. How does it apply in those cases? Yeah, that's a good point. Um, the uh, code does require um, this to apply to renovations as well. So if you were going to, for instance, replace um, a panel in a uh, hotel room, for instance, then you would have to add the SPD to that location, which could impact the space and the cost of that project. 
And as Kelly mentioned earlier, uh, it seems like every code cycle there's some new requirements around surge. So I wanted to touch on an area that's, that I see that's often missed, although even though it was a, added in a previous edition of the code, and that's around 700.8, which requires that all emergency system switch gear, switch boards, and panel boards have to have SPD protection. And I just want to, just a friendly reminder to our specifiers that they do need to include that. And, you know, it seems like these surge requirements are kind of sprinkled throughout the code. So it's just really easy to lose track of where all it's required. Thank you all for the updates on the surge protection requirements.